And scandal across the pond too. British intelligence has been trying desperately to keep its surveillance practices secret, wary of public anger and legal challenges if it comes out. It's emerged, though, from internal documents leaked by Edward Snowden and obtained by the Guardian newspaper. And as Artie Seraphoth reports, the spy agency's worst fears could already be coming true. These latest documents reveal the long fight that GCHQ had against making intercept evidence admissible in criminal trials. Now, one of those memos detailing that uh, GCHQ's main concerns were that reference to agency practices and uh, the extent and scope of them would lead to a damaging public debate. Now, ironically, of course, that public debate already taking so place in the UK at the moment on the back of those Edward Snowden revelations. And for the first time in a few weeks, we're going to see the heads of MI5, MI6 and GCHQ giving evidence in public. Now, that will be broadcast via a satellite link, although there will be a short delay. Now, perhaps we'll see as this public debate unfolds, GCHQ wheeling out some of their media-friendly people. The documents also revealing that they had a list of people they could rely on for press handling. Uh, but the Guardian newspaper really pulling no punches in their piece today, saying that uh, the revelations once again calling into question the lack of effective legal protections when it comes to interception of our communications and calling this a breach of trust by the UK government on the grandest scale. Sarah Firth there. Well, for more on the controversial techniques used by British intelligence and the ongoing backlash, let's talk to former MI5 agent Annie Mashon joining us on the live from Dresden. Annie, hi, evening. Um, GCHQ's privately admitted it's been pushing things to the bounds of legality, maybe more. But what's going to happen at the end of the day? Is anyone going to take GCHQ on legally over this? One would hope so in the UK. Um, I have to say, though, that the debate around the Edward Snowden disclosures, which have been global, have global impact, um, have been sort of muffled a little bit in the UK because we have this self-censorship of the media called the Denotice Committee, which has been issued against the media. So they're frightened to report on what's going on. So let me just so get this straight. St it's not being reported as fully as it should be, you think, in the UK. This huge story. Well, um, The Guardian is certainly um, fighting forwards on this issue. There's no doubt about that. But the rest of the media tends to be um, on the side side of the government and on the side of the head of MI5, Sir Andrew Parker, who recently went public in a very rare speech and said that, well, by putting this information out there, we're protecting our terrorist enemies, we're, we're helping them, we're giving them information that they can use. So this is um, a, a media self-censorship law in the UK, which I think is probably unique in most Western democratic countries. Mm. And they are abiding by that and it has stifled the debate. The heads of British intelligence are um, due to give evidence to members of parliament shortly on November the 7th. Is that some kind of breakthrough? Should we be hoping for any outcomes there? Well, it's certainly a step forward in the right direction. In the UK, what we have is something called the Intelligence and Security Committee in Parliament, which is supposed to oversee the work of the intelligence agencies in the UK. It was put in place almost 20 years ago, but they've had very limited powers. They could only look at policy, finance and administration. This year, that has changed. This year, they're now allowed to look at the operational um, techniques and also potential crimes of the spies. They can call for people to come and give evidence under oath. So that is a step forward. However, the person who is the chair of the ISC, Sir Malcolm Rifkind, has already said publicly, um, in defence of the revelations from Edward Snowden, that all the intelligence agencies within the UK are abiding by the laws. And these laws are over 20 years old and they are irrelevant to this internet uh, connected age. There's been so much uh, media reporting on this whole big story with Merkel and everything over this last week. And of course, um, UK Prime Minister Cameron signed that uh, EU statement against NSA spy. We're, going by what we're reporting tonight, it's kind of hypocritical coming from him, isn't it? Because of what's going on <laughs> at GCHQ, surely not. Well, you have to do that. A bit like Angela Merkel has to say that she is outraged about the fact that her personal phones have been intercepted by the NSA. Um, when the initial disclosures came out from Snowden saying that we were all being data mined and surveyed, um, our politicians were slightly less indignant, shall we say. I think Cameron has to do this. He has to show that he is um, concerned about the issues of surveillance. But we have to also acknowledge that GCHQ and the German BND, the intelligence agency, have been reportedly 
very close allies and have been doing the dirty work for the NSA. So let's not lose sight of that. And a final thought, will Angela Merkel draw any comfort from the fact we're hearing tonight, um, it's been reported that when Obama spoke to her, he said he didn't know anything about any spying on her phone. Could he not have known? He's the guy at the top of all this, end of the day, his, it, it's his neck right at the top. Or maybe could he genuinely not have known? I think it's very likely he would not have known. I know um, that certain key um, senior intelligence officials in the US have lied to Congress. They've perjured themselves, apparently, um, about the scale of the surveillance in the US. I know in the UK from the inside that people working for the intelligence agencies with concerns about the scale of surveillance can be blocked from talking to the oversight mechanisms. Um, so I don't think it's inconceivable that Obama didn't know. But it was also interesting that the specific report that came out in Der Spiegel today said that he was reassuring Angela Merkel that their conversations when he spoke to her on the mobile phone were not being surveyed. It doesn't mean that everybody else in Germany in specific conversations would not be surveyed. Well, it makes your eyes cross, doesn't it? <laughs> Annie Mashon, former MF5 agent, it's always really good to get your uh, take on it and uh, all your experience uh, giving us the insight there. Love it. Thank you.